everyone, this is Arnaud with Biz.com and today I'm gonna look into these wheels into wheels figures. They look like the ones I used to draw as a child with a Spirograph sketch kit. After a bit of study I found out that her name is Hypocycloids. And I wondered if it would be possible to project these wondrous figures with a small semiconductor laser. First I tried it the mechanical way, so I doubled my 6 speed gearbox from an earlier video. Please take a look down the timeline of my channel for a video about that experiment. So I finally built the gearbox twice to drive two individual reflecting mirrors with a defined rotation ratio originating from the same motor. That took a lot of space to build up, so after seeing that mechanical solution into action, I built the laser projector with a significantly smaller footprint by electronically controlling the two rotating mirrors. But first, let's take a closer look at what a cycloid exactly is. Well, a cycloid is a mathematical figure. It's the path taken by a point on a circle rolling over or inside another circle. Visually very striking are these wheels into wheels, the so-called hypocycloids, where a wheel or a gear wheel or a cog wheel rotates inside another wheel. And when we turn the wheels, a dot on the circumference of the inner wheel describes a curve that we call a hypocycloid. Let's skip the mathematical formulas for now and keep things as visible as possible in this video. If you want to know more there's a great Wikipedia page on cycloids and I'll add these links to these pages as well in the description of this video. On that page you'll find many enlightening animations that clarify the many different types of cycloids. There are hypocycloids, epicycloids and tragoids. The name depends on the position of the dot describing the path relative to the pivot point of the inner wheel and if it travels over or in the outer wheel. We can take a look at a few by animating what's being drawn if we play with the diameter of the inner wheel here. The outer diameter is 150 units or pixels, so let's make this one 60 and we'll get a... That's gonna be a five pointed star. It gets in sync after five revolutions of the inner wheel and then it will repeat on its own path forever and ever. When the division is not that straight, for instance uh, when we take something like 56 or so, it will take a much longer time to get in sync with itself, but eventually it does. There are even some special cases here. When the diameter of the inner wheel is exactly half the diameter of the outer wheel, it draws a straight line. And how about this one? Uh, where the inner diameter is one third of the outer. It's called a delta weed, and that one even got its own wiki page. In practical terms, cycloids are created by modulating or multiplying a circular curve, such as the path described by the dot on the inner wheel, by a second circular curve of a different diameter such as the outer wheel over with or within with the smaller wheel is spinning. The funny thing now is that should you want to project these figures for example with a laser, all you need is two small wobbly rotating round mirrors, for instance on a small motor. If you point a laser to one of the wobbling mirrors that's reflecting it to the other wobbling mirror, you'll be able to project these fascinating figures. Ok, so if we're going to make that projector with the two small round wobbly mirrors, the final figure that's been projected depends on the relationship between the two rotational speeds of these mirrors. This matrix gives an impression of the shapes that we're gonna get if we have different rotational speed ratios. So the numbers in the top row here 
represent the relative rotational speed of the first wobbly mirror. And the vertical numbers here represent the relative rotational speed of the other. Note that if both mirrors are exactly at the same rotational speed, the result is a relatively small circle. The same happens, of course, if one of the mirrors doesn't rotate at all. These figures are also called rose figures. And with a little bit of imagination, it can be seen that the flower-like figures with only a few leaves from the first line change to the more complex figures we might remember from the spirograph drawing set from our youth. For various experiments and projects in the past, I have already collected a number of different semiconductor lasers like this. And as you can see, I've printed some holders for them, so I can use them with the Fisher Technique construction material. These are red lasers, 650 nanometers of frequency, with powers of 5 and 50 milliwatts, and this is a blue laser. I looked it up, it has 450 nanometers of frequency and it's 100 milliwatts strong. So that's a, quite a strong laser. All these are working on a supply voltage of only 5 volts, but this green model, also I looked it up, um, 532 nanometers this one, is 50 milliwatts and it's the only one in the collection that needs to be powered with 1.8 volts so we have to be a bit cautious here that we don't power it up with 5 volts uh, so i have decided to build a small power supply with a lm370 adjustable voltage regulator for it Okay, I have to say, as with all lasers, caution is advised. These lasers are relatively weak, but even these lasers can cause eye damage. Therefore, never look directly or through a lens in such a laser. None of these lasers are really high focused, by the way. The laser dot quickly has a diameter of a few millimeters. And in addition, the lasers with the low power so these small below 50 milliwatt lasers actually are not that good to use for projection they just have too little light output for projection they are certainly suitable as a replacement for a lens lamp in a light barrier or such but figures projected with them are hardly visible in daylight so perhaps it's best to use the blue laser which has a considerably higher power at 100 milliwatt and might be better to project recognizable figures. After a bit of experimenting with the small mirrors I had laying around, I finally bought a pair of these optical surface mirrors online. Unlike a normal mirror, these mirrors have their reflective layer on the surface of the mirror. So, the laser beam does not first have to pass through the transparent glass, which will, of course, also reflect part of the light. So, with these optical mirrors, there are less ghost reflections, and the final projected image is not unnecessarily clouded. In the end, I designed a few of these different holders for these round mirrors. Uh, the platform with the mirror on these makes an uh, angle of around 4 degrees with the hub or the platform. So the mirror is wobbling when it is rotating. In order to give the two rotating mirrors different rotational speeds from one common motor, a mechanical gearbox would have two individual output shafts. In fact, that will just be two identical gearboxes next to each other. In that way, it will be possible to control the individual outputs separately. This is one of the gearboxes with the ratios 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5 and 1 to 6. And as you can see, I have simply built that mechanical gearbox twice. This one was built mirror-wise alongside. And with these two gearboxes, it would be possible to project a whole matrix of 6x6 six six 
also for example the ratio 3 to 4 and 5 to 4 etc from the rose figure matrix we saw a moment ago. Just follow the link to the project page you'll find in the description of this video for more information. Or take a look at an earlier video of the 6-speed gearbox built out of Fisher Technique. Let's go over it quickly before I switch it on. This is the central axle that can be shifted and it's able to travel along these cogwheels that in a moment all will have the same speed. But as you can see they differ in the number of teeth they have and in the diameters for sure. Uh, this one has only 10 teeth and this one 20, 30, 40, 50 teeth and finally 60 teeth. In this way each of these three sliding gears on the shiftable axle can be driven by one gear on the left and one gear on the right. So we need three of these because each one is served by only two of these main cog wheels. The rotation speed is picked off of this cog barrel that I have printed. By the way, these cogwheels with 50 and 60 teeth also had to be designed and 3D printed because these gears are not part of the standard Fisher Technique project range. The two rotational speeds can be switched over here and these are transmitted to over here. So they can drive these two mirrors. And the mirrors have to be rotating in different directions, so I invert one of the rotations over here at the beginning. Laser is mounted over here. So the ratio of these two rotational speeds here will determine which figure is to be projected over here on this little screen. All right, enough about all that. So let me switch it on. And there it goes. It all originates from uh, a 500 RPM motor, but because a relatively large amount of torque is lost, especially in these bevel gears over here, the mirrors rotate only at a speed of about 4 to a maximum of 25 Hz. So let's switch at least one of the mirrors to the highest speed. There we go. And well, as you can see, this is still way too slow to achieve real persistence of vision, so to speak, which is of course required for clearly recognizing what's being projected over here. The projection more or less consists of a laser dot moving along a path of the figure. However, the figure is kind of recognizable. It's clearly visible that the corner points of the figure always fall exactly at the same point. That's, well, that's the case because it's standing there rock steady. No drift in rotational speed between those mirrors, of course. Completely understandable because both rotations are derived from the same motor and it's only the distinct cogwheel ratios that define the final rotational speed ratio over here. So that's a good thing, but it all takes a lot of space and it would be nice if we could see the projected figures more clearly because these mirrors were rotating a lot quicker. So perhaps it's time I try to fix these mirrors directly on their own motor and see what we can do with that. So here we have a solution with two mirrors that are driven directly by their own motor. With this solution the rotational speed can of course easily be increased considerably. But the individual speeds are not linked as with the mechanical solution. So to keep track of the different turning speeds and especially the relationship between them, the challenge will shift to the individual speed controls. I opted for my Zauberling, which is already equipped for dual motor control. I've made a few videos about this controller, so take a look if you like to know more about that. And maybe this is also a good time to give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you like these videos. 
For direct mounting on the motor shaft, I opted for these small optical surface mirrors with a diameter of 20 millimeters. The 3D printed mirror tables have a mounting sleeve with a hole of 4.5 mm that fits directly on the warm shaft of a Fisher Technique Mini or S motor. Let me see what we get if we switch this on. Okay, there we go. That seems to be controllable in a way. As expected, the projected uh, figures might not be stable directly due to the use of two completely separate motors that are free running of course but with a little bit of fiddling or perhaps adding an additional fine tuning it's at least possible to vary the rotational speed ratios in such a way that we see recognizable figures being projected here we might even add fine tuning to the Arduino sketch in here to get more stable figures or Perhaps not, because it's also nice to see them gradually transform from one to the other. Yeah, that's nice. Um, well, as expected, the electronic control with a microcontroller simplifies the model considerably. The whole model fits on one small building plate now, instead of several connected larger building plates with the mechanical solution. So, to summarize things, the rotational speed of the two motors with their separate electronic control is obviously more difficult to synchronize and as a result the final projected figure might be spinning and twisting a bit more but at least the mirrors have a much higher speed so the figures are much better recognizable. A possible refinement could still be uh, something to adjust the motor control in such a way that instead of the two individual rotational speeds the specific rotational speed ratio can be controlled. That might be a future project. To anticipate this I have already built a simple RPM meter to measure two rotational speeds and give a hint about the ratio. Please take a look at that separate video that's on my timeline of my channel over here. For now this is about it. It was a great experiment and I certainly want to investigate with other fascinating figures that can be projected with a laser. For instance the so-called Lisa Zhu figures. But that's for the future. For now keep playing and creating. Hope to see you with my next video and until then I'll conclude with a well meant happy hacking. Thank you.